Oh, hi friends. I had spoken about the Alcon again about a month back. It's a fantastic atomizer. My personal favorite. I use it the most. It ticks in all the profiles. Flavor, vapor production, throat hit. And I do direct lung inhales with the Alcon again. In fact, I learned direct lung inhales which came automatically while I started using the Alcon again about a year and a half back. So it also comes with its inexpensive younger brother. Today let me talk about that one, the Earl Prince. So the Earl Prince is nothing but the Alcon again. They both are one and the same. Externally, looks wise, you won't be able to differentiate anything. They look same. And vape similarly as well. The only difference is purely aesthetics. Dimension wise, both are same. Both are 21 mm rebuildable tank atomizers. Both have the same kind of bottom look, the same kind of top end look, the same kind of tanks. They both come in stainless steel as well as a polymer tank. The difference is only in its one build quality, two materials, three finishing job, fourth the top cap design and fifth the bottom deck design. So let me take you down and show you all these five differences in some close-up shots. So like I said before, the difference between the Earl Prince and the Alconigan is basically five pronged. First is the build quality. Now the Alconigan, this is the Alconigan and this is the Earl Prince. Now the Alconigan, this is made entirely in Austria in the workshop of I2R the makers of Alconigan. So they have devoted enough time and precision in machining and finishing this atomizer. Its tolerance is top notch, second to none. I2R also helps in making precision OEM parts for Swarovski, hunting rifle systems, Tatra vehicles, precision instruments, etc. So they know their job well and it shows in the Earl Conigan. Whereas the Earl Prince, this is designed by I2R no doubt, but it is made in China. To their specs, of course, but still made in China. So there is a slight difference between this and the Earl Conigan. Mind you, this is just a sticker. I got many of these, so I kept it for distinguishing between each. The second difference is in its materials. Now Alconigan is made of 316 L stainless steel. This one is 303 grade stainless steel. So the manufacturing cost already goes down by 50% between this and the original. Third is the finishing. Now if you notice the Alconigan has got a bead blasted finish. Whereas the Earl Prince is plain brushed stainless steel. So again costs has been cut which reflects on its pricing. Fourth, the top cap system. Now the Earl Conigan has a system of a wedge and a notch on the top cap system. Though mine is filled but still I'll try and open it and show you. Now if you remove the drip tip you get access to its top cap. Now here you can notice that there is a wedge here. And similarly, the top cap lid has grooves cut down, which fit on these wedges. And thus, it makes it easier to open and close. Whereas in the case of Earl Prince, the top cap is just plain with a lid like this 
So there is no wedge, no knot system. It's a plain top cap with a plain top cap plate. The fifth and final difference is the base. Externally as well as internally. Though mind you both the bases are basically of same design. It's only a minor difference which doesn't affect the vape quality or the performance of the IT. It is only while disassembling the bases you may notice the difference. This is the Alcon again. Its number of teeth is more. It's a flathead screw type pos pole. Whereas here the quantity of the teeth has reduced and the pos pole is different. Besides inside the pos pole on the Alcon again is customizable unique with a PEK base plate. In this case it is just a Delrin insulator and the base plate is little different with fewer number of parts. So let me open it for you. Drip tip out, top cap cover out. For opening the top cap of the Earl Prince, as it doesn't have the wedge and notch system, you can use a pair of tweezers, insert them in the fill holes and open up the top cap. Give a slight bend, remove the tank and here you have the deck with the chimney. And here is how my current build was. So let me remove the old wick and trim that part of the wick off. Whereafter, holding the coil with your fingernail, pull the old wick out. And then give it a dry burn. If there is a need, we can use a pair of tweezers to scrap the coil. That's what I do. Put the tweezer teeth inside and try cleaning it from inside as well. A few dry burns more. And we are usually good to go. But for this case, let me wash it up and come back to you. So here is the Earl Prince in all its glory, all washed up and ready to rewick. Let me remove everything else and concentrate on the deck. So before we rewick, we can give it a couple of uh, dry burns more. This also helps to assure that while cleaning we have not messed up the coil. Perfect, the coil is now absolutely as good as new. That's the fun of micro coil and cotton. You just rewick it. There is hardly any need of changing the coil. Let it cool down. Meanwhile, I'll get my wick material organized. So for wicking, I'll be using my usual rayon. Just cut about 4 or 5 centimeters piece. Then for a 2 mm coil, I don't need this much of wick. All I need is half of it. The half width of the stock diameter of cello cotton rayon. So for which flatten it a bit and then split it into two. Exactly half. And I'll be using one of these, one is gone. So taking that one half, start rolling it. 
we need to roll it to give it some sort of wick form. Not too tight, just slight roll. Like so. This is good. Now we need to make one end of it pointed. Like so. Then bring in the deck and insert the wick through the coil. Like so. Remember while pulling it from the other side, it's wise to give this end a twist and put your nail on top of the coil and pull it across. Like so. Once you feel a little bit of resistance, you can leave it there and then move it, move it back and forth so that the center part of the wick sits in place inside the coil. Thereafter, unravel the other end up. Because we need open shoulders at both the ends of the wick. Like so. Then, flatten it up a bit. Vertically. Because we will be snipping it vertically. Both the ends. like so then keeping about half a centimeter at both ends about 5 mm snip the ends off like so repeat the other side looking like a bow tie right a little more work and we are good I will be cutting it off this way around 60 degree angle. Bottom will remain 5 millimeters on both the sides. The top will come down to about half of it. Say 2.5 millimeters. So give it a cut like this. I will be using some alconigan juices for this purpose. This is 6 mg and high PG juice. This is 80% PG. So before I put them and place them, let me give a test fire. Yep, looking good. So now I need to just shove this wick inside the vertical juice channel. Using a flathead screwdriver helps. Like so. This flathead exactly sits inside the groove, the channel here. And I'll be keeping it flat, straight flat like this. With the puffed up shoulder at a 90 degree kind of bend. Near 90 degree. Like this. Repeat the other end as well. One tip. Don't saturate it more. Leave it semi dry. So that when you assemble it and fill it up capillary action takes in and the wick starts feeding properly by itself. Now if you have noticed, both the sides is nearly flat vertical with puffed up shoulders. Notice it has hardly any tail in the channel. The tail is probably just covering half of the channel. Yeah? It is not touching going till down. Now we can attach our chimney. Remember also that with the Earl Prince we don't have the feed control ring. That ring is done with the Earl Prince. 
like so. Attach it to your device and take a vape. That's what I do always. Fantastic. Once more please. Then assembling everything together. The tank. After placing the tank it is wise to press the top and the bottom together around its circumference so that the tank has sat well before you attach the top cap. While attaching the top cap ensure that the o-ring is present. Now because I will be filling it up, I will tighten it down completely. That is another tip. To avoid leakage, tighten it dead tight, completely tight. Fill it up. You can take your pace for filling. There is no need to hurry it up. Once the AFC is closed, there is no problem. As with all tank systems, remember to fill it only till about 90%. Keep 10% empty space. With the Earl Prince, while fixing the top cap lid, ensure that the holes are not matching the bottom holes. Uh, it won't happen with the Earl Konigin, but it will happen with the Earl Prince. Because that groove and wedge system is not available. Here we go. It's ready to vape. Open the AFC. to your desired level. Keep it upside down for a while. Say about 5-6 seconds. Maximum 10 seconds. Inverse it. We are good to go. I made the bow wig this time which is again a simple new friendly build. Doesn't take more than 10 minutes to make and it performs fantastic. Earl Prince like the Earl Conigan I find is one of the easiest tank systems to build and maintain. Attaching the coil, wicking it is pretty simple. Once you know what you need to do, you are good to go. There is absolutely no hanky panky. It is very simple. You, I have shown you. These are the two builds. The first one was the two cut system and second is this bow wick. Two simple builds, performs absolutely. No dry hits, no gurgling, no feeding problem. I have used this same build for high VG juices and high PG juices. They perform exactly the same. The differences between two, the Alprins and the Alconigan are minimal. On the vape front, the vape experience, the vape satisfaction front, both are same. Absolutely no difference. It's only the aesthetics, the build, materials and quality and all that which I have explained before. That's the only difference. So, at nearly one third the price, or is it one fourth? At such a low price, then it's higher end sibling. This is a preferred choice for the masses. Yes, of course, you need to deal with the top cap system. Uh, with the Earl Prince, it becomes easier to open and close the system. With Earl Prince, you need to be extra careful so that you don't mess up with the fill holes because there is nothing to stop it there. That's the only problem. Feeding system, filling system, everything is the same. I have also received a clone of the Earl Conigan. This was during uh, Focal ASIC, I think the company was, which uh, listed uh, Earl Conigan with uh, my name engraved on it. So as a courtesy sake, they send me a couple of Alconigans, including its nano version. That's all Bullocks. That one, all the four I received, yeah, four I received, all the four were weighing double than the Alconigan and the Earl Prince. 
Alprins and Alcorrigan are of the same weight. They are nearly half the weight of a Kfn light. But the clone which I received was like a Kfn light. It was a heavy, heavy metal. The, the beautiful part of getting the original from I2R, Ideas to Reality, the company which makes the Alcorrigan, is that they have created a system which is having the highest juice capacity and is the lightest possible RT in its class. It's a 21 mm RT, holds 6 ml juice and weighs half of that of a KFN light. One fifth or one sixth of that of a KFN 4 and nearly one eighth I mean, uh, of a square reloaded. I mean both are no comparison. This is a lightweight device and vapes absolutely stunning, wonderfully. People have often told me over the forums why I prefer the Alconigan. Well, because of these reasons. I basically like 21mm mods because I personally feel for an 18 series battery there is no need to go 22mm. But yes, I understand most of our devices are 22mm so having a 22mm RT seems to be right. But I mostly use 21mm uh, mod, the Wizards Apprentice Evolved. And the Alconigan looks fantastic on it because it's the same dimension. Besides that, the Alprins, like the Alconigan, vapes so well. Lightweight, pocket friendly, leak proof, it never leaks. I have, I mean initially when you don't know how to build it, it might leak. No doubt about that. Most attics will have that. You need to have a learning curve. But once you know exactly what you have to do, you see by both videos, this one and the previous one, you will know what exactly to be done. You do that, there is no way it can flood or leak out. It doesn't leak out while filling, it doesn't leak out midway. And the flavor profile, it is second to none. With all the high-end artists, yes, there is a very marginal difference between the flavor profile of each. KFN4 is also good. Square Par, not so. This, to me, as of now, personal preference, its flavor is the best. KFN4 is closer, but this is the best. Phenomenon Light, again, a good flavor profile atomizer, similar to this. Vapor production, you can see, there is no shortcut to it. I am using a high PG juice, by the way, 80% PG. So there you have it folks, I had done the Alconigan uh, review a month or so back and today I am speaking about the Alprince. It is a inexpensive version of the Alconigan, performs exactly the same, looks exactly the same, vape satisfaction top notch. So I hope you like it and you can rebuild this uh, with your Alprinces. Remember say no to clones, there is no need of buying clones. This is just about 35 or 40 bucks I think. And it's an original genuine atomizer coming from an original genuine modder. Stick to originals and have a ball. You will have no issues with the system and you also have a customer service to back on. Anything goes wrong, I2R, Ideas to Reality, the makers of Alconigan will fix it for you. The vape industry is already under duress. But by God, the government is gunning for our A55s. So don't add on to that burden by buying clones and stopping innovation altogether. You don't need to because of the availability of such inexpensive authentic products. This is not 2014 anymore folks. Please give vaping a chance. Bytel next.